the top five metal bass riffs of all time. <laughs> Ian, what's up? Number one, the number one bass line. Symphony of Destruction by Megadeth. Oh. That bass is amazing. <laughs> like drivey, but tight. Yeah. Palm muty. There's some stuff going on. We're going to get into that. But the main meat of it is like... Yes. Open E. It's not this. Right. I'm doing the, the old ch karate chop. I'm muting the strings here, okay? I'm putting my hand across, like chopping down on the strings there. And that mutes the string, right? So totally you're, open. You're playing with a pick as well. I'm playing with a pick as well. How are you holding the pick? Can you show that too? Yeah, for sure. Get your thumb. And for me, I put it straight across. Yep. Like that. Decent size of tip sticking out. Yep. And then with this finger, the index finger, I just curl it around. Like that. But if you angle it... It almost sounds like you've got a like bit a... of overdrive. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And the notes that we're using here are F, okay? That first fret of the E string, and then G. Yeah. On the third fret of the E string. And the fingers that you should use for this, super important, are the first finger and the fourth finger. Because it's rock, baby. One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So as I was reviewing this video, I was disgusted that Scott and I were playing all this fancy esoteric gear in a so-called beginner's video. So I wanted to come in and give you a couple of budget alternatives. So for that cool five string F bass that Scott is using, check out the Squire Contemporary Active Jazz Bass. If you want to get wall vibes on a budget, check out the Sterling Ray 4 by Ernie Ball. And if you want to lean into a smorgasbord of effects, but you don't want to pull the trigger on a Line 6 HX stomp, try the Zoom B1. And as always, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Back to the video. Next up, ooh! Metallica, for whom the bell tolls. Like, this is a classic Cliff Burton bass line. Like, Cliff Burton, obviously, legendary bass player. The first, I think, was he the fat? He wasn't the founding member of Metallica, but he was the first bass player. For sure, the first Metallica. bass player, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is kind of like the bass, it's his bass line that everybody knows. Incredible. <laughs> I used to have hair like oh, that. Oh, so did I. I. Used to have in my younger years. <laughs> so did oh. I, dude. Right, give us the vibe, right? What's uh, going on, dude? Well, I mean, so if you want to do it with the sound, so all I'm doing here is I'm kicking on a fuzz and I have a little bit of a wah, like an auto wah. So I'm playing. Big old open E. I mean, and that's such a fun sound to do with this sound on. Like sometimes I feel like he lets that E ring over the whole thing. But I sort of feel like maybe it rings over this first line. Then, then you shut it down when you yeah. get to the D string. So you're smashing an open E. I'm not gonna do it with the sound right now, right? And then we're playing. That's so cool. It's just four, three, two, one with your fingers. 19 down to 16. Yeah. Right? Dead easy, yeah. Yep. Yep, and then we're gonna play with our second finger on the D string. That's a G and a G flat, G, F sharp. Then all the way back up with a pinky on the G string to that 19th fret. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. And Cliff's getting it a little wiggle too, you know? Yeah, and, and you might have heard of this thing called like finger per fret. Mm -hmm. That might really help you here as well. And what a finger per fret means is I'm kind of assigning, you know, we said that four fret block, 16, 17, 18, and 19. I've assigned a finger per fret and I can just think in numbers, right? So finger four, three, two, one. Yes. Next st string, two, one, back up to four on the high string and then 
two, one on the next string. Okay? Yes. Put a sound on it. Oh. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, crazy train. Who's the bass player on this in? Bob Daisley. And Bob Daisley actually wrote these lyrics as well. I think pick. Great. Do you know? If you know, let us know in the comments. Was he playing this with a pick or was he playing it with his fingers? Ugh. Then it's like happy vibes. Yeah, so if we're talking about that intro, we're talking about this tune in the key of either A major, or if you walk it on down to the F sharp, you can also think about it as F sharp minor. Turns out they're the same. So we're playing. Okay, so fit to fret two. That goes down that a few times, and then it gets to this cool kind of like. <laughs> I mean, like. I'm using my fretting hand to mute the string. So instead of trying to stop it with a pick, which you kind of get these weird harmonics, I'm actually just taking the meat of my finger pads and dropping them on that string. And then I'm kind of doing the same thing here because I want to mute the open A string when I come up to play the octave of A. And this is so cool because this is literally just walking down an A major scale. Right, if we continue, you've probably heard that a time or two, right? A major scale. Right? Okay, so the next track is, this is one, Metallica, Enter Sandman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pyro was on the downbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music was on the upbeat. <laughs> Depending on where you are on your bass journey, if you're just starting out, you know, this could be tricky just because it's not, there's these pushes happening, which means we're pushing into a beat. We're not going one, two, three, four, uh. Uh -huh. We're going one, Two, three, four, and. If you count one and two and three and four and, that's where the tune starts. And the bass line, one, two, three, four. You know what, I'm muting as well to get that Symphony of Destruction thing. Got Same it. vibe, yes, right? Yes, yes. Except I lift the mute, maybe Jason doesn't or didn't, but I'm lifting the mute at the. So should we just break it down super slow for these yeah, guys? Yeah. So like one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One more time. Yeah. Last, but maybe my favorite. We've got Tool, 46 and two. That low D ringing out. Pick, right? Pick City. Pick City, yeah. So, you know, he's actually using a wall and we were trying to find this sound. I mean, all I'm doing is putting on a bit of phaser and I have it into an amp sim. All that means is it's just a piece of software in this Line 6 HX Stomp that is simulating the sound of an Ampeg SVT, which is a classic old rock and roll amp. Now, you don't need to use this stuff, but we kind of like to try to get close to the sound because that puts us in the right headspace yeah. for the tune, right? So let's see if we get this. How cool is that? See if I can do it. I'm just look this. Ha 
<laughs> so cool. It's great. Something else that we need to just point out as well for anybody watching the video is that this base has a different approach. This again, it's a Walmart one. It's got a different approach than any other active bass. Like something like this just has like volume, volume, tone, and then I've got this like bass, middle, treble. 99.9% .9 of active basses have like bass, middle, and treble on them, okay? This does not have that approach, right? It's got these filters on it that are kind of like a wah-wah built into the... So what, we, what I'll do, just to, if you play, Ian... Yeah. Check this out. Oh! I was chasing this sound and I was not, I couldn't get the top end to sound right to me. And you discovered this. Like you were like, oh, let's mess with the filters. Yeah. And we don't know if Justin Chancellor does this on his wall, but that was the closest that we could get because there's really that point in the upper mid range. Yeah. It's just oh, so oh, cool. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. Because you turn it off and you turn off the phaser. It still is cool. It's and cool, I mean, but it's not the sound, is it? Yeah. What's so cool about this is you're always going to be droning your open D string. Right? So that D is going to ring out through all of this. I would probably use fingers one and three or one and four. These are also some hammer-ons and pull-offs. Yeah, it's a great right? way to learn this. You might not have done that before. A hammer-on is where you play one note and you get two because yes. you hammer on. So and cool. a pull-off is the opposite where you pick one, pick it once, pull it down. Okay? Yes. So you get two for the price of one. There's our first hammer on. Okay, from C to D, then we play. So two more two hammer more hammer ons. If this is a lot, make, make sure that you grab the PDF. It'll have the tab and the notation for it as well. See that, you know? Yes. And then it starts again. Yeah. So it's just the end that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Instead of going, it goes. It's so a 12 to 11 pull off, and then a eight. To seven. I'm talking about frets here, by the way. Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, as it, again, make sure you grab that PDF with all of the tab notation. And with that said, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>